Welcome back to the GCP Mindset Channel. As you may know from our previous video, the essential documents of each clinical study are the study protocol, the investigator's brochure, and the case report form. Today, we will take a closer look on the study protocol more after the intro. Let's talk about the content of the study protocol. First of all, there is the UDRA CT number that is allocated to every study conducted in Europe. The UDRA CT, European Union Drug Regulating Authorities of Clinical Trials, is a database for clinical trials on humans involving drugs, in which all studies conducted in Europe have been listed since it was commissioned in 2004. Furthermore, the study protocol contains information about general aspects and the background of the study, the purpose and aim of the study, the study protocol with an overview of visits and measurements to be collected, a representation of statistical study design, and the list of inclusion and exclusion criteria. The study protocol also contains the treatment plan for patients, showing the dose and frequency of the medication, an overview of further treatment of study participants after the end of the study, an assessment of efficacy and safety, discussion of the statistical evaluation method, including justification for the selection of the corresponding method, regulatory information regarding access to source data and original data, as well as quality control and assurance. In the study protocol, ethical aspects of the study are presented in detail as our termination criteria, regulations on handling data and their archiving, financial and insurance-related aspects of the study, as well as the method of publishing the results. When amendments or addendums to the study protocol are agreed, these must be added to the study protocol. Please try to keep in mind that all substantial amendments to the protocol must be approved by the Ethics Committee and the competent authorities. The following changes would generally be considered substantial amendments, changes which have an impact on the safety of the persons concerned, changes which have an impact on the interpretation of the scientific documents on which the trial is based, or on the scientific value of the trial results, changes which alter the conduct or the management of the trial substantially, changes which have an impact on the quality or safety of the investigational medicinal product, changes which alter the assessment of risks to the health of non-trial subjects, and in the case of clinical trials involving medicinal products consisting of or containing genetically modified organisms to the environment. Non-substantial amendments are administrative changes like the correction of spelling errors the clarification of certain information given in the protocol or if the name of the CRO changes. These changes do not need to be approved, but a notification to the Ethics Committee is required in some countries. All people involved in the study must know the study protocol. For a study to run smoothly, it is vitally important that the inclusion and exclusion criteria the pattern of visits, the treatment regime, the termination criteria, and the preparation of the drug don't need to be read once again at each visit. For this reason, it is not advisable that an investigator participates in too many studies at the same time, because confusion of protocols constitutes both a considerable risk for patients and impairment of data quality. Even sponsors must always keep an overview. If, for example, the investigator receives information from employees of the sponsor that does not seem to be conclusive to him or does not meet the national standard, he should not hesitate to ask for clarification. We hope you learned something interesting about the study protocol and are looking forward to see you next time. Have a great day. Hey there, don't forget, like and subscribe, but most importantly, click that bell so you never miss another video.